Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylin. If you haven't been here before, welcome. I'm so glad you're here because I have a big haul for you guys. <laughs> it has been a long time since I filmed a haul, like over six months. So I have a lot of books here. I've actually tried to film this video a few times. This is my third time trying to film this video. Uh, the first time my sound got corrupted and the second time the lighting was really really bad so hopefully this is better. Crossing my fingers. I hope you all had an amazing holiday season and a happy new year as well. It's crazy that it's 2020 already. Um, my 2019 was not the greatest. It was, yeah, it's not the greatest. <laughs> so I'm excited for a new year. These books come from a bunch of different places. I've gotten some from friends and some were sent to me. So we're gonna just dive in. The first book that I want to talk about is one that we actually chose for a book club that me and some of my friends started. January is the first month that we're doing this. I'm gonna link their announcement videos down below in case you're interested in learning more about it, but we are so excited and I'm being able to include you guys so we can read some books together. I know there's a bunch of different book clubs out there, but we really wanted this one to be casual and just something that we could do with each other. So hopefully you guys will join us. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. The first book that we're reading for January is Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall. And I got this book uh, probably a few months ago and when we were going through choices of different books that we wanted for our book club, I was like, hey, I have this one and it was like one that I just threw out there not really thinking that we would pick it up. But this is our book choice and I'm really excited about it. This is a thriller kind of horror book and it takes place on this road that only comes about once per year and on this road there are seven different types of gates that you have to get through in order to survive pretty much. <laughs> you can't go back once you've entered onto this road. So the main character goes here looking for her sister that disappeared and she goes here with some of her friends and things start happening. <laughs> So I'm really, yeah, I hope it's not too scary. I hope it's one that everyone can read and get through. Yeah, this is the first book and also the first book for our book club. So yeah. The next books I'm going to talk about are ones that I've received from some of my friends. I have talked about some of these in one of my vlogs. So I'm not going to go into too much depth on them, but the first three books I have are from my friend Zoe. She's part of the book club with me and she is just one of my best friends of all time. She's amazing, so inspirational and such a positive person. I love her so much. So if you haven't checked her out, which I'm sure you have, <laughs> I'll leave her channel down below. She got me The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. This is about a girl who is on a ship by herself. Her parents have died and eventually she gets a call from NASA saying that there's another ship coming up to her. She starts to communicate with the captain of that ship and I'm guessing there's like romance. I don't know exactly, but it sounds really, really good. The next book she got me is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I have heard so many good things about this book and I am so excited to read it. I want to pick it up pretty soon. It's about a girl who lives on the edge of a forest in a town where they sacrifice one of their children every single year to a witch that lives in the woods. The witch ends up raising these kids and giving them to another town. This particular little girl ends up becoming a special one and yeah. That's all I know about it, but I'm really excited. And lastly, that she got me A House at the Bottom of the Lake by Josh Mallerman. And this is a short story. I actually have no idea what it's about, but I think it's some sort of thriller. And I love short stories. Oh, yeah, it's a horror book. <laughs> I just read that at the bottom. Um, but anyway, I'm really excited to read it and hopefully I'll get to it soon. Zoe said that this was such a good short story, so I'm looking forward to it. Okay, the next three books I got from my friend Liv, and she is the other host of our book club. Again, another one of my best friends. The three of us have have really formed this amazing bond together. We have so much in common and it's been so nice to grow friendships that are meaningful but also not judgmental. We can talk about anything together. We can talk about our faith and it's just so nice to have an amazing group of friends. So I will link Liv's channel down below as well if you haven't checked her out. 
both amazing, amazing people. <laughs> the three books she got me, the first one she got me is The Strangers by Margaret Peterson Haddix. This is about three siblings who move into a mysterious house where three siblings had disappeared previously. They start to uncover these secrets and realize that there's a lot of parallels between them and the three siblings who had disappeared. So it sounds really interesting. This is a middle grade as well. Next book I have is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I have been wanting to read this for years. <laughs> for so long. I haven't ever read a Patrick Ness book and I've been wanting to for so long and I always thought that this would be the perfect book to start on. I know that it's really hard hitting and really really sad. I'm not 100% sure what it's about. I think it's about a little boy whose mom is really sick and he gets really angry about it and this monster appears because of that. Um, I'm not sure what else happens though but it's illustrated and I am so excited to read it. The last book she got me is the second book in the Mirror Visitor series. I have the first one and I've been wanting to read it for so long. I think I might pick it up pretty soon because I'm pretty sure it's a wintry book. It's called A Winter's Promise. So <laughs> anyway, I'm really glad that I have the second one now so I can just move on to the second one once I finish the first. So anyway, I'm excited about this one. Also this cover yellow is so beautiful i love it so much the next book i got from my friend kendra kendra is the most genuine person in the whole world she's such an amazing creator here on booktube as well and i feel like she's one of those underrated creators she just does such amazing i love her vlogs her travel vlogs are so good and she's one of those people that is just constantly supportive and constantly kind and just wonderful definitely one of the most genuine people on here and she got me the book graceling by kristen cashore she said that this was one of her favorite series and i'm really excited to read this i've had it on my list for i uh, for so long and i know this is kind of an older book i think it came out in 2008 or something like that i know this is one of those like classic ya beloved stories and i'm really excited to read it i don't exactly know what it's about but um, I kind of want to go into it that way. I will also link Kendra's channel down below as well. The last book I got from a friend is from Diana, from Diana in the, in the Nook. <laughs> and she got me Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Ayemi. This series I feel like was such a big one when the first book came out. And ever since then I've been wanting to read it. This cover is gorgeous, and so hopefully I'll be able to read the first one soon. I haven't heard a lot about this second one, but I'm hoping that it's just as good as the first. As far as everyone's opinions of it, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this one. And thank you so, so much, Diana, for sending this to me. It was so sweet of you. Those were all the books that I got from friends over the Christmas season, so let's move on to everything else. I have, there's a lot here. And I and I'm probably gonna have to go through some of them pretty quickly, but I also want this to be casual and not feel too rushed. So let's see, where should we start? We'll start with The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is the Illumicrate edition. It is gorgeous. It doesn't have a cover on it, but I don't think it needs one. It is just so pretty. I love it. And I love the blue sprayed edges. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous book. And I am so excited to read this one. I read The Night Circus, um, not last year, but the year before that. Or maybe I read it last year. I can't remember. <laughs> it was a long time ago. But I loved it so much. The writing is so different, and it's kind of poetic in a way. I don't know. It was a, it was a very different read, but I really enjoyed every second of it. It wasn't like a favorite book of all time, but I really did enjoy it. So I'm excited to read her second book and hopefully it'll be a good one. I don't know what this book is about at all. <laughs> I have no idea. But I didn't know anything about the Night Circus really either, and I was really glad that I didn't going into it. So I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna go into this unknown as well. <laughs> right, the next book I have is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. And I actually heard about this series from Liv from Olivia Reads a Latte. She was reading this and she really, really liked it. She liked the audiobook a lot. 
So I am really excited to read it. That was the reason <laughs> that I got this one. I actually don't know a lot about what this is about. I know it's in a land where there's a bunch of different types of witches. And the truth witch is one that can discern truth from lies. It just sounds really interesting. And anything that has different types of magic like that, I'm always into. So hopefully it'll be a good one. And I know it's a series, so yeah. Next one I have is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. And I recently read Winterwood by her and loved it, so I'm really excited to read this one. I've heard good and bad things about it, but I really did like Winterwood, so I think I'm gonna enjoy it. This is about three sisters who are executed because of witchcraft, and because of that, the whole town has a curse on it. Also, this book is so pretty. It has like a holographic front and then this underneath. It's just so pretty. The next one I have is another middle grade. I have quite a few middle grades on here as well. I've just been really into them lately. And this one is The Language of Spells by Garrett Weir. And this looks so cute. <laughs> this is another book that I found through one of my friends, Lexi. She said she loved it so much and I just am really excited to read it. It's also a beautiful book as well. I feel like middle grades, there's just something so different about their covers. They seem to have more whimsy and just, I really like the covers of middle grades. This is about a young girl who feels very misunderstood and kind of weird and strange in comparison to her classmates. And she realizes that she can talk to dragons and see dragons. <laughs> and she's the only one who can do this. So she makes friends with a dragon and I, that, yeah. I don't know where else it goes, but it sounds really, really cute. Right, the next book I have is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. I know this is one of those books that was so hyped. I feel like everyone and their mom was talking about this. And so of course I got excited about it too. I do love Leigh Bardugo's writing. So when I heard she was doing an adult book that was a little darker, I was really excited about it. This is the Illumicrate edition and it is gorgeous. <laughs> it feels like snakeskin on the front of it and the side of it is just so pretty. I loved this version and so when I saw it, I was like, this is the version that I want. <laughs> I've heard a lot of mixed feelings about this. I've heard that it's a slower paced book. I've also heard that it's really dark. I'm usually pretty good at getting through slow parts of books as long as it picks up at some point. So I definitely want to give this a try soon and hopefully I like it. <laughs> Next one I have is The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. And this is about Guinevere from the King Arthur story. I love King Arthur. It's something that I never really thought I would get into. But ever since I watched Merlin, which I highly recommend, it is a, an amazing show, I feel like Guinevere has a lot of mystery behind her story, especially with her story with Lancelot and stuff. It's something that I've always found interesting, so I'm excited to read this. The next book I have is Neverworld Wake by Marisha Pestle, and this is about a group of friends who all have one of their friends disappear, and the girlfriend of the boy who disappears is thinking that these friends know more than they're saying. As the night plays out, they get sucked into the Neverworld Wake, which is a place where time kind of stands still. They have to pick one of their friends to die, otherwise none of them will get out of the Neverworld Wake. It sounds really interesting and definitely lots of mystery behind it, so I'm really excited to read it. I've heard really good things about it too, so hopefully it's a good one. <laughs> Next one I have, I am really excited about this book. It just sounds so good. <laughs> this is The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. This is about January, who, who is the ward of a wealthy woman who lives in a manner that has a bunch of different mysterious objects. She finds a book in here and as she starts reading it, it transports her into a magical land and it just sounds so good. It's so whimsical and interesting. So hopefully it'll be a good one. And also this is another beautiful cover. <laughs> All right, the next book I have is by Neil Gaiman. This is The Ocean at the End of the Lane. This is the illustrated version and it is beautiful. This hardcover is just stunning and the inside is just as beautiful. I love these illustrations. They're very mysterious and just black and white and I'm really excited to read it. 
Um, the only thing I know about this is that this is about an old man who returns back to his town where he grew up in and he starts to remember things from the past. This is another author that I've been wanting to read for a really long time. I've never read any of his books but I've been really wanting to and I thought that this would be a good one to start with because it is illustrated and I can get through illustrated books really quickly so yeah this is the next book. Okay, I have, I also have some mangas here. I got the next three books in the Promised Neverland series. This series is amazing. <laughs> I know that so many people love it. I actually haven't heard anything bad about it. It is just one of those mangas that people adore and I am one of those people as well. The first three were so good and these are really, really dark. The first three were pretty dark, but I'm assuming they just get darker and darker. I know that the first three covers looked very innocent, but these ones look a little more menacing, so I'm excited to read this. This is about an orphanage where these children live, and the woman who runs the orphanage takes one of the children to be adopted out into a new family. And that's all I'm gonna say. It gets really dark. <laughs> Okay, the next book I have is A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. This was another book that got recommended to me by Lexi. I feel like a bunch of these are. This is about three sisters who have a curse on them and they are trying to break that curse. That's all I know. Lexi, this was like one of her favorite books of the year, so I'm really excited to read it and, I, and I'm hoping it's just as magical as it looks on the outside. Next one I have is a little bit different. I am, I'm a big fan of Greek mythology. I've always been interested in it. I just find it fascinating. <laughs> I think it's so interesting that people used to believe in these gods that are literally horrible. <laughs> and after reading Circe, which was one of my favorite books from last year, I definitely wanted to get more into Greek mythology. So <laughs> I got this book, Mythologica, and this, this is like an encyclopedia type of book about the monsters and the gods and the mortals of the ancient Greek stories. It has the gods, the muses, and I just love the style of this art. It is beautiful and so different. I just love it. Like, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm looking forward to going through this and reading about some of these gods and yeah, it's just a beautiful book. <laughs> Next one I have is No Exit by Taylor Adams. This takes place in the Rocky Mountains, which is really exciting because that's where I live. I live in Colorado. I love when books take place and where I live. I feel like I can get more into them. This is a thriller and so maybe it's not the best type of book to get into because I might be scared. But there is a storm in the Rocky Mountains and because of this storm there's a bunch of people that stop at a rest stop and as the night goes on they uncover a body in the back of a car and <laughs> I think it just progresses from there. I really want to read this when it's snowing out so hopefully it'll snow one more time this year so that I can read this book. <laughs> All right, the next one I have is Alice by Christina Henry. This is an Alice in Wonderland retelling, but it is a darker, more gruesome version of that story. <laughs> I know that Christina Henry does a bunch of different retellings of fairy tales and, and classic books. I adore Alice in Wonderland retellings and Alice in Wonderland in, in general, so hopefully I'll like this one. Okay, the next one I have is The Beautiful by Renee Audier. This is a vampire book that takes place in Louisiana. I feel like Louisiana is the best setting for vampires. They just go together so well. There's something about Louisiana that's kind of creepy and there's something kind of like ancient about it. I don't know what it is. I really enjoy movies and TV shows that take place in Louisiana that are kind of creepier. So I'm hoping that this will be a really good example of that. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this and it kind of reminds me of True Blood, like True Blood took place in Louisiana and was about vampires, so I'm really excited about this. The next one I have is The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. This is my friend Zoe's favorite book and so I really wanted to pick it up because of that. I actually have zero idea what this is about. I just know that she loved it and so I'm really excited to read it. I think it's about people who are immortal. 
That just could be because of the title. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure, but it's a beautiful book. I love the cover of it. So hopefully I like it. The next one I have is The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. This is another middle grade and another beautiful, beautiful cover. <laughs> I love this cover. When I was looking online when I was buying A Pinch of Magic, it popped up a bunch of other middle grade books that I just immediately was like, oh my gosh, these are gorgeous. <laughs> and so I looked up the ratings and I looked up the summary to see if it was something that I'd be interested in. And this one was the one that I am most excited about, I would say. It's about Baba Yaga, which is a myth that I've always been very interested in. I think it's fascinating. She's a witch who lives in a house that has legs. <laughs> and this is about her granddaughter. It definitely sounds like a book that might be good for the Halloween time, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to read it whenever. This one I have is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. And this is about a grave digger. <laughs> Our main character is a grave digger and her whole family have been grave diggers. And uh, I think that's really already interesting. I've never read a book where the main character is a grave digger. They live in a place where there are risen dead people called the bone houses. There's a reporter that comes to town and when he comes to town, these bone houses become really aggressive and ferocious. So it's up to the gravedigger to sort this all out. <laughs> Sounds really interesting. Next one I have is The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis. Now I have only read C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia books. I haven't read all of them. I think I've read like three or four of them and it was a long time ago. But I've been wanting to read more of his books lately. I just think he's an amazing person and he has so much insight and he just really has thought-provoking books so I'm excited to read this one. This is about a man who is on a bus from hell going to heaven. I know obviously it's a book of fiction. I'm just excited to see what things I can get out of this and it's really short. It's like really really short. Okay the next one I have is Winter Song by S.J. Jones. I actually heard about this book from an employee that works at Barnes & Noble. I was in there just looking around and she, and we started talking about books and she was like, this is my favorite series, you have to read it. Especially because a lot of the books she had read I really loved, so it sounded like we had similar tastes. Anyway, this is about a main character whose sister gets taken by the Goblin King. I think it takes place in the Goblin Market sort of setting. I always think of the labyrinth when there's any sort of goblin king and I love David Bowie and I love the labyrinth so I'm really hoping there's like little reminders of that in here. I don't know that might be hoping for too much but I'm really excited to read this one. This one I have is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo and this is about a siren queen I think or princess? Princess. A siren princess. And honestly, that's really all I know about it. <laughs> but once I found out that this was about a siren and it was like mermaidy, even though it's not actual mermaids, it's sirens, <laughs> I was really excited to read it. I'm pretty sure there's some sort of romance in here and I've heard really good things about it. Anything that takes place in the sea, I am automatically attracted to. So the next ones I have are some more mangas and these are The Girl from the Other Side number five and six and this is a favorite manga series for me as well i mean honestly i haven't really read any bad mangas <laughs> but this one it just i feel like it hits harder than others it has some deep-rooted um, messages in it and things that i think that you can get from them which i always love this is about a place that is separated humans on one side and these creatures on the other and the creatures are cursed they can also curse other humans so humans are really afraid of these creatures and they've separated them by a big wall this little girl ends up being left on the side where these creatures live and one of them finds her and takes care of her and it's just so sweet and really pure and i love it there's also like a mystery behind it. It's a little bit strange, which I like. And yeah, the, also the illustrations are super different from any other manga that I've read. So next one I have is Pan's Labyrinth. And this is a book inspired by the movie. I absolutely adored the movie. And when I saw this, 
I immediately was like, oh my gosh, what? I didn't even know there was a book coming out. It's also by the same director of the movie, which is really cool and interesting. And look at the inside of this. It is so pretty. Ugh. It also has some illustrations in here as well. And this is kind of like a classic fairy tale sort of feel, but it has a lot of darkness to it as well. Another like darker fairy tale sort of thing. I definitely love those. The next one I have is The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. I recently finished the Folk of the Air series and I was really sad. It was one of those series that really has a lot of sentimental value for me. I was also looking for more of like a magical forest sort of book and so I asked some of my friends and they recommended this one. Next one I have is another Alice in Wonderland retelling but this is from the perspective of the Red Queen and this is by Marissa Meyer who wrote The Lunar Chronicles, which I've never read before. Again, I love Alice in Wonderland retellings, so when I heard that there was one that was actually really good that was based off of The Red Queen, I immediately was drawn to it, so I'm hoping <laughs> that I'll like it. I think I will. I've never read any of her books. The next one I have is The Girl Who Speaks Bear. This is another book by Sophie Anderson, and this was another book that I found while I was looking at middle grades, and I love the cover of this one too. It has some metallic on it, some red and some gold. This is about a little girl who was found in a bear cave as a baby. As she grows up, the townspeople kind of look at her funny and talk about her behind her back. So she decides to leave and uncover the mysteries of her family and her past. And I'm assuming she can talk to bears. <laughs> anyway, it sounds really cute. It's another illustrated book. Next one I have is The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. And this is a graphic novel. It's about a prince who wants to dress up in dresses. And so he meets a seamstress who starts making dresses for him. I don't really know a lot else, but it has really cute illustrations. I really like the style. It's very bold. I like the bold outlines. The next one I have is another middle grade. This is Deep Light by Frances Hardinge. And this is gorgeous. Look at this cover. I, I am just so attracted to this cover. It is gorgeous. It's about two friends who go diving for treasures. During one of their outings, one of the boys gets taken away by the waves. And so the other boy decides he's going to go after him. And he finds that his friend is not the same person as he was. It sounds really, really good. It takes place on some islands. Like, look at that. I just am really excited about this book. It's just so pretty. The next one I have is Crier's War by Nina Varela. I am, uh, this is another cover that I just love. It's so beautiful. It has blue and silver, just really pretty. This is a sci-fi fantasy hybrid. It's about a girl who was made to take over after her father dies, take over the kingdom. But then she's betrothed to a man who has a lot of secrets and I'm guessing has ulterior motives. <laughs> it's about love, loss, reven revenge, and what it means to really be a human. So it sounds like something I'll really enjoy. And again, it's like a sci-fi fantasy hybrid, which is really cool. I haven't ever read something like that. The next one I have is Some Kind of Happiness by Claire Legrand. This is another middle grade book it's about a young girl whose parents die. And so she's sent to go live with her grandparents. She gets really, really sad and depressed. The only way she escapes those feelings is through Everwood, which is a forest kingdom that she's created in the pages of her notebook. I can't tell you how much that I am excited to read this book. I feel like I just love middle grade books that have these types of topics that talk about depression and sadness and things like that. I just think it's so important for kids to understand it and learn how to cope with it at a young age. Seems like it's gonna be a really hard hitting book. Next one I have is actually a book of poetry. This is Pillow Fats by Courtney Peppernell. I've been wanting to get a little a little more into poetry lately. I feel like I, I've never really been 
I've never really understood poetry, but I want to. <laughs> so when I saw the format of this book, I instantly thought that this would be a really good starting place for me. It's separated into different sections according to how you're feeling. So there's one if you're in love, if you're sad, if you're lonely. Organized into categories that I feel like it would be really helpful when you're feeling a certain way to just like flip to that section and read some poetry. I feel like that's such a cool idea and I'm really excited to read this. I think I'm gonna put it on my bedside table so that I can just like pick it up whenever. <laughs> Next one I have is another manga. This is a Bitsu by Harutu Ryo. Ryo? I don't know if I'm saying that right. But this is a horror manga and I've never read a horror manga before. <laughs> it looks terrifying and the in illustrations, like look at that. That is terrifying. <laughs> this is about an urban legend of a little girl who lives on a corner. She's dressed in gothic Lolita clothes. And when anyone walks by her, she asks, would you like a little sister? <laughs> and depending on the person's answer, they will die. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> it just sounds like so terrifying. Okay, I have two books left. The next one is Monstrous by Majori Lu and Sienna Takeda. I know I'm saying their names wrong, so I'm sorry. But this is a graphic novel that I've heard really good things about. I was actually looking at a list of the best graphic novels of all time, and this was on a few of the lists, so it got me really interested in it. I have seen some people read it, but I really wanted to read it for myself, and this was on sale at Barnes & Noble. This is like the hardbound edition. And it comes with these really cool cards, which is cool, um, but also the illustrations are amazing. This is like my favorite <laughs> illustrated illustrations I've seen in a graphic novel. They're just magical looking. Last books that I have here are this Wildwood series. This is the box set and I just love it. <laughs> if I could put my style into an illustrated version, it would be these books. I love them and I was instantly, instantly drawn to them. So this is a middle grade series. It's about a girl whose brother is abducted by a murder of crows. And so her and her friend decide that they are going to go into this forest where he disappeared and try to find him again. As they journey into this forest, they find a secret world. And it just sounds really, really cute. And it also takes place in Portland, which I'm really excited about. My husband's family is from that area and I just love it there. It's gorgeous and the perfect setting for a magical world. So I'm really excited about this series and I'm really hoping that I love it. All right, so that was all the books that I have for you guys. That was a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much for sticking through this. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that maybe you found some new books that you're interested in. If you've read any of these, please let me know your thoughts on them. Or if you're really interested in any of them, please let me know. I would love to see what you guys think about these. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that's about it for now. I love you guys so much and I will see you next time. Bye.